Alrighty, day two, and we are doing a little bit different today instead of coming straight from the gym and recording that whole situation. Uh, I decided, yo, you know, we're just gonna we're just gonna film straight, full 45 minutes, however long it is. I'm gonna burn through all three batteries today. Um, right, I got two more. I have the, I'm about to send the bird up, and then. Um, yeah, we're just going today. We're mapping Black Wall Street, the historic Black Wall Street district. Uh, it won't be like the full bandwidth um, of everything, but um, it will be a, a good amount. And I'm going to be burning through all three batteries. So let me get the bird in the air here. And I'm going to. So, my check, we're on. And I'm going to get you guys some live action on the drone. And she's up. She's up, and we're turning left. Boom. Alrighty, so yesterday, as you saw, that was the field, right? That was the field that we shot yesterday. Um, went through a little bit of like how that process works with shooting, uploading, um, managing those assets. Now today, what we're gonna do is a little bit different. We're gonna be shooting this right here. This right here is the only buildings left now there's a few actually out here which is on the, on the other side of the highway so um i'm right here as you can see there's my car over here there's the rest of there's a couple of buildings but the main ones are here which is where we're going to be mapping out today so master shot that's my car uh, I think that's the air compressor. I'm still trying to figure that out to this day, but for as as of now, what I know, um, yeah, that's what it is. So what we're gonna do though, we're gonna do. We got waypoint. I'm gonna set some more waypoints today, guys. And I saw this thing yesterday where I could set waypoints directly on the map, and that's what I'm interested in doing. I want to see, but uh, so we're doing this mixed satellite. I wonder if it gives me all the antennas. Here we go, satellite mixed. Hmm. Well, looks like not working too well. So, what we're gonna do is new regular. We're going to start with our 45 degree. Okay. Right. Mapping. Actually, since this is lower to the ground and I'm not having as much of surface area to cover, I'm actually going to go up to 30 degrees. This is, and we'll go a little bit lower to the ground. Okay, we'll go about, what is this, how's this at here? We're at 90 feet in the air, that's, that's about good. And now we're just going to, one. Remember guys, let's stay under, whenever we're filming, we're just doing brief hyperlapses. Let's try and do eight. So the best way to do that is think of yourself like think to yourself, okay, I want to do a square. Okay. And then outside of that square, I mean, oof, there's the tower. Okay. There's some power lines that we're going over, right? It doesn't have to be perfect. All we're trying to do is just collect the assets, right? We're just trying to get close enough to the building. Do we have access to all the assets? But as you can see, this is the um, original buildings still standing. We'll get into some more stuff here in a minute of what all some history. And it's actually interesting. Uh, my main man, Cody Ransom, out here, he's the local historian. He's actually the one that runs all the, all the tours here. And he's actually literally out here right there uh, right now doing a tour. So it's kind of interesting. Uh, 
timing wise but yeah so knock out this one zoom not supported i didn't try zooming how's your day been you guys been good you've been filming you've been shooting what's been up to you at school so i'm at 10 right now i should have enough for one more right just kind of and this is so it's probably one of the ugliest circles I think I've ever made um, but you know it's a perception right it's a state of mind so so the length is 18 seconds I want this to be 30 seconds Okay, interval is two seconds, regular sequence. We want lots of photos. We want lots and lots of photos. So we're gonna burn through this battery. Okay. Okay, first waypoint. So it's gonna shoot 750 photos for us today at 100 feet AGL. Um, at a 30 degree, negative 30 degree angle. We have our White balance, auto corrected. We have our EV at negative seven because it's cloudy out today. And again, I'm adjusting, attempting to adjust for, you know, ND filters and everything. But this thing is clicking. Okay, so what that means, while that is clicking, um, we'll do a little bit of fun fact, kind of like, let me do yes or some research on um, this part of city. So, all right, so this is my IGsoft, one of the softwares I'm going to start using. Let's look at, go, let's look at Black Wall Street on X. And actually, I can tell you a lot that I don't need to pull up on here, but I'm going to use this for contextual purposes. So to give you a little more background, actually, before I go into this, um, Cody and I and one of the other business owners here on the on the, on the the wood called Reggie Cooper, the Muscle Squad, he's got a gym. Uh, we actually did a podcast not too long ago, and Cody gave me all the details, right? As a historian, that's his job. He goes around and does these walking tours. Actually, I can probably show you here in a second. I think he's still in that building. But it was really cool. He gave me a lot of insights in just like Oklahoma history, local history, um, like governmental, political incentives, how all of it kind of ties and plays in together. Uh, just as you know, this is a piece of history that people walk through, that they tour through, and just like you would go to like Rome overseas, right? You're going to learn about the history and see if there's something we can take away from that. So uh, let's see here. Let's look at the first fun fact that YouTube, um, that Google pulled up for us. That in fact, the community was so self-sustaining that it's now estimated that every dollar spent in the Greenwood district circulated within the neighborhood and its businesses at least 36 times. According to historians, the district's success actually inspired black author and, and orator Booker T, which then became the Booker T High School, which is right here down the street. Um, that's pretty interesting. That's pretty fascinating. So I'm, I'm curious, Like again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at this from a viewer consumer's perspective and hopefully ask the same questions you are so you know why like how how is that so um how did um how did the green wood district circulate money 36 times faster than in others right so what answers you guys have for me? And I can tell you the answer, right? Which I will. But first, I wanted to see what Google is popping up and what, uh, what information is available. Black Wall Street before, during, after the photos. So while I'm trying to find this to give you guys some imagery, right? For those who don't understand, 
Black Wall Street massacre situation happened a little bit ago. Um, there was a district just north of Tulsa that was growing really, really fast. And, you know, it caused some impedance on some other um, agendas and other situations that were happening um, downtown, and that caused some turmoil. There was some miscommunication, let's just say that in a light, um, in a light format, and it ended into uh, bombings and massacre writing, and then, yeah, just the complete melting of and destruction. I believe it's over two million, three million dollars back in the 1920s in claims that turned into stuff like this, right? So you look at the Tol Tulsa Greenwoods neighborhood found pretty much this is what it looked like. Um, now there's tons of um, photos, you can go on the internet and look at this for yourself, but why that's such an important, um, distinct piece of imagery to look at is because prior to this, it was a very prosperous, like this street you guys see up here, right? This, this street that you see us mapping right now, this is what it used to look like, okay? This is what it used to look like, and now all that's left is only a couple of these buildings to put in perspective, right? So um, that's kind of why I like mapping and, and using this as a way to use this kind of technology to like kind of retell history experience in real time because each one of these mappings which again i'm going to start integrating this into the actual showcasing at the end of the video i'm going to start doing a, a rendering for each one of these oh speaking of them here he is so here's mr cody right that's mr cody look at him that's mr cody and here's another tour group Right? And so they're taking a photo in front of this Black Wall Street mural that, um, yeah. Okay, let me get back over here. That's the Black Wall Street mural. That's um, everything else. Let's hop back here into the screen recording. What I love about this part of Tulsa, though, because technically this is within the city, is that it's such a homey feeling. Like, he owns the um, Black Wash for Liquid Lounge. Everybody knows Cody and Guy. And, you know, they're one of many other businesses here. It's just they're very homey. Very um, friendly. Very There's a collaborative spirit, and that's the solution that I was going to get to you guys about, is how they became so big, right? How they became so big was because and they grew so fast because there was a spirit of collaboration that was this mutual like end goal in mind that like wow, everyone's, and I think what it was, because like, do you think about it like this guys, and this is actually a very interesting point of topic that I can address with him on another podcast is I truly believe the reason why there was such a collaborative spirit was because there was so much money coming into the city at that time. And let me explain this, right? So Tulsa, as you saw previously, my apologies, um, we're going to get back <clears throat> one more time into my phone. Uh, just brief other Tulsa history, right? Is that Tulsa, oil capital of the world, okay? So Tulsa was once the oil capital of the world during a certain period of time. Like they were moving oil money. And we'll actually go, uh, I've flown one, a couple already, some oil uh, refineries and rigs over there in the south, southwest part of town, which I'll show you guys later. But they, they had like, they had some stuff guys. You see, like if you look, they got some stuff moving because they discovered kind of like you know how like in dubai right now they struck they have so much oil that it's just stupid amounts of money and wealth over there it's the same kind of concept but in a very small and like niche historical fashion is that's why i personally believe there was such a collaborative spirit is because there was so much money coming into the city right that at that point in time the natural instinctive way that 
the Greenwood District was built by the black community was that, hey, we're all in this together. We all, you know, we're, we're, we're all people together. Why don't we just build together? And it's not necessarily of like a competitive spirit. It was more of a collaborative spirit where it was like, okay, why don't we keep building alongside of each other? as we roll out and develop new forms of technology that help us move currency faster within our local economy. And that's how I think they got to 36 times the value, right? Again, this is just, I, I bought this as a way that I, I, I inspect it, but it makes sense looking at and looking how other cities around the world also move currency and what maybe that is stopping or what's, I am sorry guys, this is getting me on a tangent here today, but yeah. So, either way, that's just, that's a little bit of Black Wall Street, Tulsa Oil Capital World. I feel like that's a big player in how they become collaborative. And for the future, that's kind of my point is, I see that as long as we can recatalyze another movement, and which leads me to my next point, recatalyze another movement into Tulsa that can bring so much money in, in such a short period of time, I feel like there could be a spark again for another Greenwood movement, if that makes sense. So this is the remnants of the old Greenwood, but I feel like there's a new Greenwood on the rise. And I feel like it's gonna be led by this right here. Which I'm Tulsa name tech hub. Um, boom. So, as of recently, and I just got done talking with um, Tyrant Billingsley at the Black Wall Street Times. I believe it's Black Wall Street Times. No, Black Wall Street News. I, I have to figure out what organization it is, but talking to him about it, and he presented this to us that you're seeing on the screen. That Tulsa is now the tech hub designated for equitable development across the U.S. So there is let's see here tulsa designated the tech hub white house names tulsa among selected tech hubs right there's i think you said there's 31 regional tech hubs to create jobs in rural areas okay so tulsa is one of the 31 which is a big deal in some capacity but it's not like it's kind of getting like in march madness again to like sweet 16 right it's not it's a big deal but it's not that big of a deal i personally think because what's going to make us a super super competitive economic driver is when we look at what we can specify like what is our niche how can we niche down within this tech hub conglomerate uh, idm right how can we niche down even more specifically and what does that look like for us right so i think how we do that is you start looking at where the money, again, and this is again back to what we talked about yesterday, right? If you want to make a lot of money in this game, you have to follow where the money's going and you have to understand what's happening with the money. Who's buying it? Why are they buying it? What are they interested in? What do they want to build? X, Y, and Z. So let's uh, check out Tulsa Innovation Labs. They, they look like they have something they are talking about here. So the autonomous, the autonomous systems revolution has arrived and Tulsa is well positioned to harness the power of these technologies to become the Heartlands te Tech Hub, which I'm assuming is for, you know, the central part of the region. Consortium of uh, Tulsa partners called the T Tulsa Hub for Equitable and Trustworthy Autonomy, Theta, recently submitted a proposal for the economic blah, 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 blah. The con consortium... So TCC, Black Tech Street, so that, Black Tech Street, my bad, that is uh, Tyrus' organization. The University of Tulsa, Partner Tulsa, Oklahoma State University, Madison S Strategies Group, and TEDC Creative Capital. Ada intends to just designate 20 regions based on their ability to become competitive and advanced U.S. national security while catalyzing the creation of good jobs. Here we go for American workers at all skill levels, right? So what they're doing is giving you and me an opportunity. If we move to Tulsa, say, hey, over the next five years, 10 years, we're gonna start deploying out a lot of jobs and getting access, low barrier entry access to jobs that 
revolve into the cybersecurity space, into advanced um, autonomy, uh, sorry, unmanned very aerial vehicle systems, right? So the UAV, the drone stuff that you're watching now, right? All of this will become easily accessible for you to get a job if you come to Tulsa. That's what it's saying here. And all these organizations teamed up together to make this happen. Led by Tulsa Innovation Labs, Theta aims to truly turn the Tulsa region into a global hub for innovations in autonomous systems, which is expected to be a $1.3 trillion market by 2032. Here we go. Ready? So... Theta's application will focus on innovations. Here we go. Theta's innovations in uncrewed aerial systems, UAS, so what you're watching right now, generative and artificial intelligence, or AGI, and cybersecurity technology. So listen to me, guys, right now. If you want to make your first $100,000 skilled worker, right? Just skilled worker. We're not talking about content, all this stuff. You want to position yourself in a high opportunity low barrier to entry environment come to Tulsa learn how to fly a drone how to prompt engineer or, or learn deep learning AI application technologies like how to work you know computers to comp size stuff or be a cybersecurity guru person what they're saying is they're going to pour in a lot of money into these three type of people if you can fly drones if you can work with AGI you know to communicate and you know how to build cybersecurity technology systems, right? So they can safely deploy autonomous systems for the emerging economy. Because the U.S. wants to compete with the world. And so Tulsa is saying, hey, we'll do it. We'll help you guys out. So check this out, right? Tulsa uh, designated data will leverage the, re the region's scientific strengths and enable society to, re to realize the maximum benefits of autonomous technologies without co compromising safety, security, privacy, or public trust. A tech hub designation has also enabled the region to pursue critical goals such as expanding economic opportunity for black and native Tulsans, leveraging the blah, 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 blah. So, a region from economies boom and bust cycle. ADA investment in tech hubs will enable the Tulsa region to capture up to $4 billion in global market share in autonomous systems and will create 200,000 new jobs. Okay, so here we go. And I'll probably get into when it's going to start, but listen, that's a big deal. It's not going to be a huge, like, opportunity right now, but it's like, if you're young and you want to position yourself in a place to where you want to have a physical place to get access to these kind of resources and capital looks like Tulsa is a place of all places to do that because they're going to be pouring four billion dollars in opportunity or extracting four billion in opportunity um within the Tulsa region alone so should theta blah, blah, blah. yeah and so what happened was recently Tulsa did receive the 75 million dollar grant from ADA to launch this and it will launch in this and it will receive this this year, end of this year, right? So here are the three reasons why you should um, you should re you should receive. Oh, okay. So I'm sorry. This is their proposal. I think part of their proposal before they sent it out to Ada, right? Their strength in region specific scientific capacity. So yeah, UAS security that right there guys are you seeing this right now uas cybersecurity, and complementary technology domains that means anything in advanced aerial ground cybersecurity. like if you guys become specialists in this space specialists you're going to be get paid more than doctors like you have to be expert but if you're expert you're going to be paid more than doctors and that's super critical because i came to tulsa because i Got through tech stars, right? So I got a chance to learn VC, learn notes, safes, preferred stock, equity, diluting, diluted shares, you know, all the whole nine yards, raising tr traction, metrics, market, final market fit, like all that crap basically that goes into understanding how to tokenize or fractionalize or techify your personal brand that you want to build into a SaaS product, right? I've got that insight down so i'm telling you from that lens and that experience looking at this right now this uax you guys build software SaaS for these industries and you apply to techstars tulsa you apply to act house in tulsa you apply to build in tulsa you apply to any of these you are going to get accepted because not only will you get backed by a hundred thousand or two hundred thousand whatever it is you're going to have 
like actual investment money, whether it be uh, no equity investment from an act house, or that's an equity investment from Techstars, or whatever. You're gonna also have eyes from philanthropy, from grant money, like all like. So niche down. That's what I. That's kind of how I look at it. Is like if I was if I had to redo it again, I would focus on building a UAS. SaaS product or cybersecurity SaaS product or some sort of like complementary, you know, compsci, you know, AI pro uh, SaaS product that benefits the local market in Tulsa. Like it has to immediately benefit the local market and you have to be actively doing it. So for instance, if you're watching me, right? I'm just I'm just saying what I'm doing, right? I'm this is this is my business I'm building in in, in real time, right? Project Technologies is this. I am I am mapping all of Tulsa, right, with a Mavic Mini 4 Pro, right? So it's not some high-grade technology, $20,000 drone. It's not, I'm not using thermal imaging. I'm not using, like, advanced software to so get super high quality. No, I want to be able to produce an entire rendered version of Tulsa in the next three months or however long it takes for me to get to that point. But the point I'm making is, like, it's possible, guys. And now with just, it's about speed, getting to the market. That's all that ED, uh, ADA, EDA, right? ED, the EDA people, which is the government. All they care about is like, we have to be able to compete at the speed of our competitors in China, in Russia, and all over Europe, Australia. Like, the other eastern part of the world is kicking our ass right now in innovation, in AI. But... The U.S., and I've learned this from, like, reading some more of the U.N. documents, are becoming more cognizant of, like, the moral, the moral implications of developing this fast. So, that's what I think we have to do, is we, we can merge those two. And, you know, if y'all look at my Instagram, I made a little, like, tech startup idea the other day, right, about this, where it was called Ethi Labs, where it was, like, ethical AI innovation, and it's, like, a collaborative open AI, like, GitHub, pretty much, where developers can come on, propose ideas, and then the UN or whoever, right, who've partnered, they can online, like, o UN developers, they can literally authorize those projects and receive grant funding to, to build those on the spot, right, so we can start creating, like, this mesh, but... You guys can watch it for yourself but so initiatives such as unmanned oh unmanned systems research institute launch pad center for advanced mobility oklahoma cyber innovation institute okay so i'm gonna pull these up right the institute for robotics ai and autonomy the counter college of engineering architecture right Demonstrates the region's commitment to cutting edge technologies. The innovations generated by the region's R&D assets are being commercialized, tested, deployed, and manufactured in the Tulsa region. Tulsa's startup community is backed by growing entrepreneur support organizations such as Building Tulsa Ever to create hundreds of new tech companies as a pathway to black wealth creation and risk capital. The region is also home to naturally unique testing facilities such as the, Sky, the Skyway Range. Oh, I had no clue any of this existed. This is so cool. Tulsa is also a center of aerospace manufacturing with more than 3,000 acres. Hold on. Hold on, guys. Give me a minute. 3,000 acres of sh shovel red industrial sites, some space for advanced mobility. So they have a lot of this. And I actually remember the mayor was saying something about this. All right, we're going to take a quick pause, guys. Quick pause. Birds about to land. But I remember the mayor saying something about this to me last year when he he gave us a state of entrepreneurship at ORU and he said that um they had they're deploying a lot of money into like expanding out like drone development operational facilities and he said that they're they're building out something right now that's at the size of like five football fields or something it's something huge and they want to like have it's, I mean, I'm assuming it probably plays a part in the aerospace stuff, but, um, yes. Give me a second. I'm going to holler back, uh, I'm gonna jump back in a second and get into the next shot. What's happening, fam? So, I figured it out, and so I'm going to pull you guys into the RC right now. Um, and we'll get into kind of what I was talking about a little bit last time. But, here we go. I switched uh, modes. So now on the screen, you're seeing a uh, top-down version of Black Wall Street, right? This is specifically what we're mapping, 
right now. And so this little feature over here allows me to literally set waypoints, right? So I can click here, right? So here's my first waypoint. And I believe it, like, I'm, we're, we're going to experiment through this full, like, real time, guys. I'm not going to lie with you. It's my first time using it. But this, to me, looks like a little bit of what I was playing around with when I used to actually do full commercial uh, shoots. Says, none camera action. So take photo. Global speed. Follow course. Manual. Uh, gimbal tilt. Uh, we wanted at what? What do we want it at? We want it at 90 degrees, right? Yeah. So it's straight down. And manual zoom. Okay. Oh, that's for all of them. Okay. So, all right, minus that. So let's see. Okay. So let, let's try to type this test it out. Okay. So we got, we want to do we just did this square right so let's do one two three four five six seven eight right um it's gonna look probably pretty ugly to be honest with you um but now that i have those so the speed God, that's not good. Waypoint one. We're looking about 10 minutes. Waypoint. And I want to be able to set like, turn it to home. Um, there's gotta be, hmm. Turn to home, end of flight, return to home, on signal loss, return to home, waypoint one, starting, speed. And then I wanna set the height. How do I set the height? Let's just try this then. All right, this could be a complete flop, we don't know. Go. Okay. So it's taking off right now. So, okay, right? So here it is. So I'm actually going to watch this, guys, for the first one. If this works well, then um, we can go back into this because I found a really, another really good article that I'm going to I'm gonna pull you up directly from the government website that's going to help you kind of look at... Um, the money aspect of this right so let's check this out so where is number one first waypoint and so it's at 150 meters in the air and let's see tilt it's not so okay this is flying the path but I want Time shot to happen every two seconds, right? No. Okay, so it didn't register. Okay, let's try that again, right? Let's try. So I have the, the path, right? Is it point of interest maybe? No, waypoint. Okay. No, 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 no. Go back. Where are you at? Eight. Right? So there's eight. Oh. Next. Okay. Hold on. Okay, so now before I get into this. Let me see if I can. So it won't let me change. Oh, there we go. Okay. Now let's try this, okay? Run it back. Run it back. So 10 minutes. 
Here we go. Run it back. Good job. Wait. No, that's not right. 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 Pause. Exit. Um, we gotta fix that one. Delete. Waypoint eight needs to be over here, right? So we're looking at one. Oh. Boom. Oh, that's really helpful. Okay, well, we fixed it. I just clicked the, you know. <laughs> That's probably, that's definitely helpful, right? Hover, let's definitely hover for like a couple seconds. Apply to all. This is interesting. This is gonna be really just a full on, oh, altitude, boom. I have no, let's, let's just try like 75 meters. Camera action, take photo. Start, stop recording. No, it's fine. Because I, I, I want to basically do a mapping with this. So apply to all. Boom. Boom. So that's all of them. Holy crap. Let's try it out. Maybe I don't need this after. Um, so it's going to go slowly. It'll fly the course. But now, what I have to do. Okay, so it's going, it's going higher now. And then when this starts... So let's see if this is high enough. Okay, so now that it's higher, it'll go to the first site, right? And once it turns around, I'm gonna click this every two seconds, boom. Now, what we're gonna do, here's our mapping. So this is interesting, right? Again, I'm trying this completely different. This is not at all custom to what I usually would film, right? Um, on like another app, but I'm, I'm just literally trying this out and seeing what all it allows me to do. And, you know, this could be a complete flop and we have to do another one. But I think that's interesting. So let, let's, just, let, let's just let this thing go for a few minutes. Um, and that's putting some brain power. You hear that sucker? All right, back to the phone. You ready? So, Tulsa hub for equitable and trustworthy autonomy. Okay. Let's look at. Let's check out what they got nominated for. Tulsa twenty three tech hubs does need Tulsa Innovation Labs is a lead lead innovation agent uh, lead agency for this state. Serve Oklahoma, greater Tulsa region. Secure autonomous systems. Contact Jennifer at in Tulsa Innovation Labs, okay? Tulsa Hub for Equitable and Trustworthy Autonomy, led by Tulsa Innovation Labs, aims to become a global leader in developing and commercializing autonomous systems for use cases ranging from our agriculture and pipeline inspection. So, there you go, right? Now you found, again, so we keep digging, guys. This is, I'm giving you market research 101, right? So we found where the money's going, then we found what they're getting investing into. Now, now they're figuring out where are they deploying it. Agriculture and pipeline inspections. It's so funny. I remember my, my mentor, Bob Ferris, when I first got into the space, he said, Brandon, we're not gonna have a fully autonomous drone inspection protocol in alignment, like ready to go for our oil and gas industry for the next probably 30 years. So I, I was with him on the phone one day when he literally like was securing a partnership with a British company that was going to white label like white label the product that basically does the sensor mapping sensor mapping for him for all these oil and gas pipeline inspections. And I'm, I it's funny how you get older and you look back like wow like I was literally in the sauce. Like he gave me the game. But now I had to go through life and become and to get the experience to realize how much value that I really was exposed to. And now it's like, wow, now I, now I got to figure it out on my own. But, you know, uh, it's part of the journey. So but that's interesting, guys. So now we know, right? Now we know if you're listening, you need to build an ag or a pipeline inspection SaaS drone cybersecurity product for the protocols that are going to be completely automated by drone technologies. If you want to receive million dollar checks when you come into Tulsa, Oklahoma and possibly grant funding. So, 
leveraging strong university-based research institutes and the unmanned systems. So partnering with schools as well. So we 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 saw that Tulsa University, OSU, right? They're both in on it. They have their own uh, departments. So maybe go maybe think about going to school there. That that'd be a good idea, right? Um, and service the Skyway Range Flight Quarter testing facility and existing capital investments. Data will develop and innovate autonomous systems applications while increasing their security and integrity and doing so the theta six your strength and national and economic security while connecting small many there we go this is what their, their vision is right theta six to strength and national and economic security while pardon me connecting small manufacturers across the region with opportunities in the autonomous boom see that right there see that right there Woo. That, that just got me all types of just whoo Oh, that got, that got me excited. It gave me the chills because this is exactly what I had said was going to happen, right? What does this simply mean, guys? I'm, I'm giving you the game of the sauce of the secretness of the Chick-fil-A, you know, a la, a la bar, a la guar. I don't think that's even a thing. How, how's the drone doing, by the way? Are, are these shots coming out okay? I, I mean, I can't quite tell, but either way. In doing so, with what they're saying, right, they're strengthening the security, connecting small manufacturers, small manufacturers across the region with opportunities in the autonomous system supply chain. What does that mean? Guys, I've been saying this now for about a year and a half, that the company that builds the roads for the drone network the drone highway network is going to be a trillionaire because if you think about it they just received 75 million dollars to get started on this idea and i'm sitting here thinking to myself i said yo if we just start if we if our intention is to create a drone highway network to connect small manufacturers and 10 mile radius distributors or like distribution companies or whatever and we start increasing the the payload right of these drones right the the end like, like right now i have 30 minutes of life on this at this rate i could possibly fly this like on on satellite if, if the drone was connected to satellite not to this rc i could fly this drone probably about 10 miles before it dies so i thought it's going to be how can we build our own drones number one that can travel between tulsa and oklahoma city right on a drone highway network above just basically mapping the exact same highway that goes from Tulsa to uh, Oklahoma City and that's completely uh, ran by satellite and it can carry a payload up to five pounds if we can do that in the next 24 months and discover that and develop that and guys like we're, we're gonna have if, if you discover, if you actually get access to that right now and you develop that, you prototype it, you test it, and build an API protocol, like, there's $5 million right there towards your company or whatever in technology innovation you want to do. But again, it's not because it's like an idea, but it's because I'm following the money. So I hope this probably taught you some about business again today too, about if you want to get money, follow the money. Right, get, find a way to throw yourself in front of the money, right? So the money's flowing this way, throw yourself in front of it and say, "Hey, hey, money! Like, let me uh, let me grab some of that, man." That's kind of dope. That actually, that is something I learned today, and it's funny because it also connects to the other. Um, you go on my Instagram as well. I did a I did a little situation the other day about um, what did I do? It was. EcoFly. EcoFly is a software that I have pro like, you know, made a, made a little pitch deck for that pretty much is that scans like uh, waste, like dumps, right? Like waste dumps, uh, trash dumps, uh, landfills, and it automatically detects plastic water bottles and removes them like flies, removes them, and then brings them to a, many, uh, a recycling facility locally right so in a way that's a local like super local practical application use case to test out 
what our technologies can do. But I'm giving you this example as well because all this kind of comes comes full circle, right? And yeah, you know, when I say look at the drone industry, I'm looking at finances, looking at banking, looking at money. Like that's that is advice that I wish I would have taken seriously, more seriously early in my life because I've all I've since I was a kid, I've always wanted to build tech, right? I've I just, I've loved it. I love engineering. I just didn't like the form of engineering sitting behind a computer all day. I like the engineering while I'm out in the world building stuff. I'm testing stuff. I'm capturing stuff. I'm, you know, rendering things. But now with AI, it's helped me completely just accelerate my learning curve and understanding that I can do all these things without, not necessarily without a degree, but it's like without like a formal educational degree. But now artificial intelligence is growing at such a rapid rate to where I'll be honest, like, I'm not a smart, I'm not like some super genius person. I, I feel like God has gifted me some intelligence, but it like, the rate at which quantum computing is like outperforming the human intellect, it's like, we're going to have a quantum computer in our hand within the next decade. So why not start preparing for that by building the lifestyle, building the educational models, building that such that we are integrating with AI, not like subjecting ourselves as like, it's AI versus humans. If that makes sense. So, this is cool. Look it up, guys. EDIGov. It's open source, available for you guys. Um, let's see here. The drone's about to be finished. So I'll pull it down. We'll check it out. And then, what I'm going to do is do one more shot of the Black Wall Street. Um, here, actually, I'll, I will, I'll put you guys on some game real quick as well. Um, please go ahead and check out my boy Reggie's page if you guys want to know like learn more about um, watch you know it's muscle squad there we go if you guys want to actually learn more about Black Wall Street and everything I did do a podcast for Mr. Reggie and uh, wait. I'm recording it I promise I'm getting there alright so oh wait that's the muscle squad hold on wait Where's the muscle squad? Here we go. So, here we go. So, the green one you didn't know, right? I wonder if we can get it back to that, but it's just like, so yeah. Our, our goal is to get it out to the world. It, it's a gym on Black Wall Street. And when I found out that there was a gym on Black Wall Street, yeah, this is, uh, I was like, yours, to get on truly this. drone shots. And by the way, just real quickly, watch this. Watch this. Boom. See that right there? That's a 3D model rendering of what I'm already I'm doing again, right? I already did this before, but I'm sharing this, guys. Sharing this with y'all again is like this is the kind of stuff you can start creating, right? As a creator, as a you know, super techie, fun like. This is the kind of stuff that like, you can do. So this is a whole football scholarship. See, I left college and went to prison. People don't know that about me. Mm -hmm. Hey, you guys, uh, I'm Reggie Cooper. We're here uh, at the Musquad Lab and uh, Greenwood. So I walk people on the tours and kind of give them education on what happened in Greenwood, but also just Oklahoma history in general. So uh, the information. So definitely check it out, guys. I I love filming that. Love editing it with the guys. Like it was, it was fun. Um, now, I guess I'm gonna get the drone. We'll be done here pretty much soon. I'm gonna go grab the drone and then we'll film one more. Uh, actually, no, we'll cut it here. Uh, this is well, this will be the end of it. Um, and then, like I said, I'll show you guys here at the end the end the end footage. But this is the this is a pretty good little insightful episode.